Cenozoic era. So I have mentioned before that human beings exist in the Phanerozoic eon. We also exist within the Cenozoic era and within the Quaternary period. So take note, Quaternary period. Okay, but before we talk about uh, human beings and the other species that existed aside from the Homo sapiens, let's discuss what had happened before. So we ended the Mesozoic era by an extinction event, the Cretaceous extinction event triggered by a massive asteroid wiping out the dinosaurs. So mammals existed during the age of the dinosaurs but were majorly defeated or eaten by the dinosaurs but since the dinosaurs were wiped out nothing is eating the mammals so it allowed the growth of mammals so during the paleogene period the first in the cenozoic era the age of the mammals began so mammals started to grow uh, in size so the first large mammals appeared in land and in the oceans so elephants the ancestors of horses and bears, and then the widespread expansion of echinoids. So echinoids are like those spiky, spiky invertebrates underneath our oceans. So the whales are mammals because they used to be on land and then they evolved back into the ocean. That's why they still have hip bones, but still they, that's why they're mammals. So mammals from land went back into the ocean. Okay, so the Paleogene uh, period, the age of the mammals began, then we have the Neogene. So remember that during the Cretaceous period, grasses have evolved. So the planet, uh, was covered by grass because the grass survived the Cretaceous event. And because of that, the mammals have evolved with the grass. So bovids, meaning those are grass eaters, so including cattle, sheep, goats, and an antelope and gazelle have appeared. So uh, these are now your formal um, bovids. Okay. And then the earliest primates and human ancestors appeared in the Neogene. But human beings, the formal modern human beings, didn't appear until the Quaternary period. So during the Quaternary period, the ice sheets centered on our Earth's poles and large mammals flourished. Modern humans appeared and some also large mammals became extinct. So something that is notable is the Pleistocene Epoch. So the Pleistocene Epoch is the first in the Quaternary period and that is marked by the last ice age. So there were some ice ages in our history but the last one happened in the Pleistocene Epoch. So during the Pleistocene Epoch, you see these large mammals. For example, the saber-toothed cat with the scientific name Smilodon fetalis. So very appropriate. But as our planet started to cool down in the Holocene epoch, of course, they went extinct. Same goes for the woolly mammoth. So the woolly mammoth existed in the Pleistocene epoch um, with the scientific name Mammothus primig primigenius. There were other species of woolly mammoth, by the way. So if you're interested, you could look them up in the website. So the Pleistocene epoch uh, within the Quaternary period was the Ice Age. And I think that's the setting of the movie Ice Age. So if you want to date that Ice Age, that's during the uh, Phanerozoic Eon within the Cenozoic Era, within the Quaternary period, and the place to see Epoch. Okay, so eventually they died out and was replaced by the Hilos Holocene Epoch. So the Earth started to warm, but not as warm as the Mesozoic period. Um, the Holocene Epoch allowed here the evolution of human beings. So you can see that our ancestors have already evolved. So this is Mark year, 1 million years ago, 2 million years three and four so four million years ago apes have evolved so the ancestors of our species but they didn't walk upright until the 
Australopithecus. Australopithecus. Okay. So the Austral uh, Australopithecus are the ones that walked upright. And we know this because they left footprints in the volcanic mud. So the volcanic mud, the igneous rock, started to cool down and they left their footprints. So the Australopithecus walked upright. Okay, but they eventually died out, replaced by the Homo. Okay, uh, by the Homo species like us. So you can see that we are the only remaining species. We don't have any other human species. So the Homo sapiens existed alongside the Homo neanderthalis, but they didn't survive. So just to clarify, the Homo neanderthal lenses were not, they were not brutes, like the ones in TV that they, they, they're just basically cavemen. Actually, they're more sophisticated than that. So they are bulkier than human beings. Um, they have heavier skulls, heavier bones, but they also have a culture. They, they also... Were, they were nomadic and they also have a society. They take care of their wounded members in the group. Um, they, have, they may have rituals because they do carry feathers and shells with them. So they have a sense of adornment and decorations. But 40,000 years ago, they just died. Um, there are some evidences that the Homo sapiens and the Homo neanderthalensis did meet. So we still have traces of Homo neanderthalensis um, in our DNA. But their formal species just died out. Reasons, we are not sure. We're not very sure why they did not survive. Um... Maybe we, maybe they died off naturally due to predators. Maybe um, they just didn't evolve as much as we did. But we are the only remaining species. The homo, the lonely homo sapiens. Well, not as lonely considering we have dominated our planet and changed it altogether. Just speaking of which, you may have read something called the Anthropocene Epoch. So, um, the Anthropocene Epoch is a, an informal term. So, the formal term for our current epoch is the Holocene. But scientists are proposing that maybe it's time to change the epoch and change it into the Anthropocene Epoch. Because, as recommended in the International Union, Union of Geologic Scientists, um, we have ended the Holocene Epoch that maybe that is outdated because we have caused so much change already in our planet. So if you notice, the way we have organized our geologic time scale is based on extinction events in the past. And human beings ourselves have triggered several, like we have triggered um, a human-made a mass extinction event, pollution, global warming entirely. So if we think about it, it could compare already with the other mass extinction events that has been the basis of our global time scale divisions. So this is not, this has not passed. We are still formally in the Holocene epoch. But more and more scientists are using the term Anthropocene. There are journals called the Anthropocene Journal, which, um, which studies how much change human beings have influenced in our planet. Um, there is even a podcast called the Anthropocene Epoch. So maybe we will see that this will be accepted one day as we finally accept that we in the rock layer because in the past we have been arranging our geologic time scale based on the fossils that our the, the former organisms have left so if we can trace the sort of change that has been triggered by our species in the rocks 
plastic then maybe it's time to change it into the anthropocene epoch so we'll we'll keep updated of what will happen um if there are any further changes in our geologic time scale so there you have it that is the summary just like an overview of the geologic time scale so we have already discussed the eons the period the eras the periods and even mentioned some of the epochs so i hope that was very informative and interesting for you as you have already learned what had happened in our history through geologic time if you have any questions or concerns you'll know how to reach me just message me through messenger or microsoft teams that's all stay safe bye